In this video, I'm going to challenge a common assumption that a lot of people have. It's about how they know things. How do you know things? Many people think that all knowledge comes ultimately through just five senses. Well, I'm going to challenge that. I'm going to show why I think that you have more than five senses. In fact, you have more than six senses. You have more than seven. You have more than eight. You may have at least nine or even ten distinct ways, senses by which you can gain knowledge of the world. So you know about the five senses. There's touch, smell, taste, hearing, seeing. Okay, well why think there's more than just five? I mean, why not think that all the knowledge that you have comes through those five? Aristotle has this question. He asks, how do you even know that you see? How, what's the sense by which you sense that you're seeing? So through your eyes, you sense shapes and colors, and you can philosophize about whether those shapes and colors that you sense are out there in the world or just in your mind somehow. But there's this other question beyond that philosophical question about where those shapes and colors are, and it has to do with how you even know that you're having a sense of shapes and colors. What's the sense by which you sense that you see? Well, here's an answer. It's an inner sense through which you sense that you have thoughts and feelings and experiences. People sometimes call this introspection, right? Like, you know what you're thinking about right now. And there's no scientific research about that. There's no peer-reviewed articles about what you're thinking about. Um, I can't even see what you're thinking about. You're probably not looking at what you're thinking about. You're not looking at your brain, for example. It's not through your five senses right now that you know what you're thinking about. It's through an inner introspective sense. So there's the sixth sense, spooky sixth sense. Are there any other senses? Well, you've heard the Matrix story. How do you know you're not hallucinating all your experiences right now? Maybe you're in Jupiter right now, and there's these aliens that have put you in a nice safe shield and are pumping you with experiences of being on Earth. How do you know that's not the case? Now, you might be thinking, you don't actually know that, okay? Because you can't rule out the Matrix scenario, and in order to know it, you'd have to be able to rule it out. All right, well, let me ask you this. It, are you are you thinking that it's more likely that you're on Jupiter than that you're on Earth right now? What's more likely? Now, if you're like me, you think it's quite obvious that at least it's more likely that you're not in the Matrix than that you're in the Matrix. It might be hard to argue for that sense that it, one is more likely than the other, but the point is, is that you have that sense. You have a sense of probability. And this sense of probability isn't merely the sense of what you're thinking about or feeling. It's not the, any of the five senses. Again, because it's a sense that is telling you about whether those five senses are corresponding to Earth or it's just a hallucination, right? It's, it's a sense about the reliability of your five senses. And so it's not one of those five senses. Okay, so it's a sense of probability. Now, this is part of a larger sense, which you might call reason. It's a sense by which you can see that two plus two equals four, or that if an object were completely red, then it wouldn't be completely not red or completely blue for that matter. You could just sense this in your mind through reason. Anything else that you have a sense of? Any other senses? Well, consider the following uh, attributes. Kindness, love, joy, happiness, cruelty, bigotry. All right, do those last two seem like they were sort of different in some relevant way from the other ones, sort of out of line? You might think that the last two are worse than the first ones. The other things being equal, it's better to be kind and loving and joyful and thoughtful and reasonable than it is to be cruel and mean and bigoted. Well, how do you know that? Is this just a sense of your own feelings? Now, some people have argued that this is this sense, the sense of worse than or better than, is reducible to a subjective sense of just what you're feeling. But what's interesting to me is that subjective statements, statements like I like ice cream, aren't, I don't have a sense that they're true if I don't exist, right? So like, I can test whether I like ice cream is subjective by just asking, does it seem, do I have the sense that that would be true even if I didn't exist? Well, like, clearly not. I mean, I have the sense that if I didn't exist, I wouldn't like ice cream because I'm just talking about myself. But I, I don't just have the sense that cruelty would be worse than kindness. Um, Right? Like if I didn't exist, that, that that wouldn't hold. I have the sense that actually, you know, people are valuable, that they should be protected. Cruelty would be inferior to kindness. 
even if I weren't around. And so even if that sense, you might wonder, maybe that sense is misguided or something, doesn't track an objective moral reality, um, you know, that's something we could discuss and think about. But my point here is that I have that sense. And it's in addition to my sense of just what I like and what I feel. So I have in addition to my subjective sense and my introspection, this evaluative sense. You might call it a normativity sense or an axiological sense by which I can discern differences in value. Are there any other senses? Can you think of, of any other ways in which you can know things, that you can detect things, that you can sense that something is the case beyond those eight? Well, consider what you were doing just five seconds ago. I assume you were watching this video five seconds ago, but where do you, where do you get that sense that that's what you were doing? Now, there are different ideas for how that past tense might get in there, how you have that sense of that. But as far as I can tell, it seems like you need this other basic sense, a sense of the passage of time. It's that sense of the passage of time, together with the preservation of past mental states, that allows you to have a sense that something happened that's over and done with. I could be wrong about that. I haven't thought as carefully about this ninth sense, the passage of time, as I have about the other senses. but it seems like a good candidate for an additional sense that goes beyond the other eight senses. Are there any other senses? Is there a tenth sense, perhaps? Can you think of any other basic senses? Now, I've asked people this, and one sense that people have reported is a sense of other persons. Have you ever had the experience where you just like felt like somebody was watching you, that somebody else was in the room with you, you had a sense of another person? I can't really tell you that I've clearly had this sense of other persons in a basic way beyond the other nine senses. But it's something to think about. So next time someone suggests to you that you just have five senses, and maybe a spooky sixth sense, remember that in addition to the five, you have the sense that you have senses. So that's six. You have the sense that you aren't probably in the matrix, the sense of probability and other logical and mathematical truths. So that's seven. You have the sense that cruelty is a worse state than kindness. That's eight. You have the sense that time is passing right now. That's nine. And you might even have, in addition, a sense of persons, which would be 10. Maybe there's some additional senses beyond those. So why does this matter? Well, one reason I think this matters is because if you wanna build a knowledge of the world, you wanna build your understanding of things, you wanna use all the tools at your disposal. The senses are the means by which we build our understanding of the world. And if you limit yourself to just a few tools, maybe five or even just six tools to build your understanding of the world, then you can miss all sorts of other discoveries in your own building of your worldview. Now I want to conclude this video by making an observation about what all the senses have in common. It seems to me that they all have in common that they're all based on awareness. So the sense of sight is awareness of shapes and colors. Sound is awareness of pitches. Uh, introspection is awareness of inner states of me. A sense of value is a sense of actual value, a sense of right and wrong, a sense of good and bad, worse, and perhaps there's a sense of persons, and perhaps there's also a sense of the change of time. These senses are all awarenesses, acts of awareness. That's what they all have in common. What I hope that this video does for you is it makes you more aware of the ways in which you can be aware. And by getting greater awareness of your own ability to be aware, it gives you more power. It gives you more power to see more, to build a greater understanding of the world. So I hope this video serves you as you build your own understanding of the world.